Have you ever wanted a fully built obsidian vault to kickstart your world building? Let me show you what I've made. So just very quickly, Obsidian is a free note-taking app that uses plain text markdown and stores everything locally, uh, all your own content. Uh, the beauty of it is it's elaborate customization that you can do, and we'll get into that. But right now, just to give you a quick overview for those that are new to it and need to know how to set things up for the first time, if you go to obsidian.md, download the program, this is what you're met with with right away and immediately you can create your new vault. So just quickly, we'll call this example. You need to put it somewhere. So I'm gonna store this on my desktop for now and it has create, well, it will create my new Obsidian vault. And this is what it looks like when you're met with it the first time. Now mine, it happens to be in dark mode, but it, this layout is the same. So over here we have our uh, left side pane. We can create our notes, we'll call this Note one, I don't know why I did that. Uh, we'll make another one, we'll call it note two. We can make a folder, we'll call it folder one. And just to show, we'll put note one and note two in folder one. And on note two, we'll say hello to note one. And we'll put note one, double brackets. We'll go back to our note one and we'll say, hey, back to ya. Note two, double brackets. We'll go up here, we'll switch from editing mode into reading mode, and just like that, our notes are linked and connected. You'll notice as that happens over here in the graph view, note one and note two have linked together uh, over here. So as you, as you keep creating, as you keep building, as you create, in our example, more characters and governments and culture and lore and worlds and territories and everything else, this will show you how everything links together in a, in a nice visual overlay. Um, so essentially what makes Obsidian stand out, I would say, is its large and immersive community plugins section. There is there is an incredible amount of stuff, an abundance of anything you could possibly want to help you create your own world is probably in community plugins somewhere. And if it's not, it's gonna be on GitHub and you're gonna be able to get it there as well. So overall, that's how that's how Obsidian works generally. That's the, that's the starting point of Obsidian. But what I wanna do is I wanna show you how we can take this into this. Now, what is this? This is our Disgraceland Obsidian Vault homepage. Um, and just to mention, Disgraceland is available. I'll have the link in the uh, description below for you to download and go in and dissect and create and make it your own and just have fun with it. But to go over it a little bit, um, we have our we have our uh, top headings right here. The the spots I go to the most when I'm creating my stories, when I'm, I'm working on outlines, when I just have a thought that I want to jot down really quickly. Um, as I write the stories, I like to have a place where I can have quick snippets, quick outlines, as you see here, of things that have happened in the story or in the overall, whatever it is, chapter or, or game or uh, session or whatever, whatever you're working on. It can be anything. But I like to have a quick update that's just right there so I know the latest things that have happened and, of course, a map of our world. Um, if we want to dig deeper, we can dig deeper. We can take a look at the large calendar system. We can look at the culture in the world. We can go over how the economy works, uh, lore, uh, just what, what makes everything tick. Uh, we can look at the different religions in our world and a timeline of how things have broken down, the history, um, the way things have shaped our, our, our territories, our world, our politics, everything. As we go down, like I said, this is where we keep, well, this is where I keep the uh, latest updates, the latest ongoings of things that have happened around my world. Uh, I update this every time I, I work on a new story or get something done that I want to that I want to make a note of. Uh, over here, I keep a note of what day it is. So today, for instance, it's the 12th, the 12th of Bloom Sun, 2186. As we go down, 
uh, we have a list and this this populates automatically as you update a character so you just you can leave this as it is and it will update on its own uh, you can see a list of just recently updated characters I've had to add things to or just make a note of what they're doing or whatever the case may be as we go down uh, the chapters the latest ones that I've worked on populate here so they just update automatically as you work on them and add new ones um, of course, that is saying everything is tagged properly. As you work on them, you'll have to make sure the tagging system is the same as the ones here, but that's not a big deal. As we go down, uh, you'll see the territories that I have fleshed out in the world. There's six main regions, six main areas, uh, all laid out right here, easily accessible as you need them. Uh, we can dig deeper and see kind of individual locations that make the world feel more alive, breathe, breathe a bit more life into things. Um, and as we go down, just a, a last little area that sums up everything, not just characters, but everything you have worked on over the past little while, right at the bottom. And that's our home page. And if we want to take a quick look under the hood, you can see how everything is built. Uh, there's a lot of call out boxes. There's a lot of use of uh, data cards, uh, data view plugins, which are just incredible work. Um, but you can see how everything is fleshed out. You just update your notes in another call out box. Um, these you don't need to worry about because they update automatically, but this is how they're written. This is how they're fleshed out and created. And you can change any of this, anything you, you want to add to the list. You don't want to add, you can take out, uh, and, and, and it's just broken down, just broken down all like this using data view, using about a dozen or so plugins that kind of make everything tick. If we look at the side pane here, I have things broken down just as clean and clear as I can. I'm going to close that. We have all of our characters broken down into if they're in a group, uh, if they're individuals, we have a whole list of individual characters here. Uh, as an example, uh, so Hella. Hella is a, uh, she's a problem in the world. She has been uh, helping a man named Ora Razchek uh, supply bodies, basically. So she's, she's a problem. She's appeared in these chapters so far. Uh, this is a bit of a biography, her personality, her role in the world. And all characters are laid out this exact same way. And you can take this, this, this system and make it your own. You can have your own characters, your own character sheets, anything you want, any names, portraits, whatever you want to do. This is how the characters are laid out. And we can go deeper. We can go into our factions, locations, a whole lot of lore that just makes everything in our world tick. Continuing on, we got our religions, uh, territories all laid out. Everything is easily linked up. Everything is easily connected, readable. Uh, it makes sense. And looking at our graph, we can see how everything is connected here. Um, different locations linked to different, the, the people that are in those locations, the events that have happened, uh, culture and history and lore that connects everything. Uh, going back to our main page, if we want to take a look at, say, timeline, we can go here, see our timeline populates, and we can just take a look at everything that has happened in our world. We can, we can zoom in and out, as you can see, and this is what has happened. This is how things have laid out. Beautiful system, easily readable, easily connectable. Uh, going back to it, we can take a look at just our economy is fleshed out, how things work, how money works. A very simple system, but connected culture, how the world breaks down in terms of entertainment, music, sports, news, and so on. I mean, you can keep expanding on this as you go. Um, so the last thing I want to touch on, um, is the maps. The map system here is fantastic. Uh, I like to keep, I like to keep everybody that is around on my map, letting, letting me know where they are, what territories they're in, what places they're at. Uh, you can zoom in, get a better look of everything, where things are, um, if you need to know, as an example, how far from Split Rest to Axtown is, you're looking at about 30 miles or so, I think that said. 35 miles from top to bottom. So there's a good way to, to let you know the size, the scope, how big things are, uh, to keep an updated just visual cue as to where everybody is currently in your world. And as we said at the beginning of the video here, if you're interested in taking a look at the world of Disgraceland for yourself, it's currently available at disgraceland.io. Um, you can download it from there and just 
pick it apart, go through it, make it your own. That's the whole idea. That's, that's my goal with this is to give people a working template that they can dive right into and just get to work on the creativity instead of focusing so much on having to build the entire system. The system is here. It's ready for you. It is fleshed out. It is just, it is waiting for, for your own ideas. So like I said, it's at disgraceland.io. Um, if you have any suggestions, if, if you would like me to do other videos on Disgraceland or Obsidian, please let me know. I hope you enjoyed Disgraceland.